Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here in La Cunada, which is on the northeastern border of Los Angeles County. And I'm here at my Uncle John's property, where I've been wanting to be here since January of this year to manage and prune this tree. And unfortunately, due to my schedule, I wasn't able to be here. So again, we're here, middle of September, and check out this tree behind me. It's going into bud and it's, it looks like it's putting out all this new growth as if it were springtime, but it's not. And just to prove it, I wanna share with you what's going on on the front side of the property where there's an, another genetically identical cutting of this plant that was planted about 20 years ago and check out what in fact this tree should be looking like. Check this out and follow me. Here we are now in the front of the property and you can see this is what the fig tree should look like mid-September. Beautiful canopy. All of the leaves are still green. And check out all of the fruit that's within here. You can notice that for every single leaf, there's a fig. Every single leaf, a fig. And plenty of fig. And you can see that the owner already picked one here. There's another one that's close to ripening. And there must be hundreds upon hundreds of figs within this tree. This is what a fig tree here in Los Angeles County should look like come September. Well, let's get back to the tree in the backyard. Follow me. Here we are back at the fig tree. and. The reason I wanted to visit this tree back in January was I noticed that it had severe third degree sunburns. And this is now the third time this year that we've talked about trees plagued by third degree sunburns. The first one we saw was in North Hollywood, was an orange tree. The second one we saw was just a couple months back um, in Walnut Creek where we visited a nectarine tree that was also um, plagued by, on the non-sunny side of the tree, with gamosis. So it had a combination of sunburn on the south facing, facing side and on the north facing side, it had a gamosis issue. Um, here we're dealing with third degree sunburn. In addition to it's being plagued by beetles and termites and other diseases that are working their way into the tree. And let me share with you um, these issues. One being right here. And you can notice all of the damage that's happened here on the bark. And when I say third degree burn, that means the bark has been burnt and the underlying cambium tissue is burnt and there's nothing green here. We're like down to the wood level and there's nothing green. This entire section of the plant has since burned. If we go um, into the tree, if you can stay there real quick, stay right there. Um, if you can follow me into this part of the tree, you can notice this entire branch, the whole south facing side of the tree is burned. All of this is damaged. All the life giving support to the tree is coming from behind on the north shaded side of the tree but all of the sun side of the tree is in the sun. And again, here we are in September. There's no canopy to help protect these underlying branches. And this plant could seriously and significantly benefit from a coat of whitewash. This issue is affecting, and I want to, while we're down here and what I call the heart of the tree, being the lower tree trunk and the lower branches, once the heart of the tree is affected and affected this bad, we seriously got, got to consider whether or not we keep the tree or remove it and start over. Let me share with you some other issues near the top. So if we come up near the top, you'll notice right in this area over here, you can see all of the termite holes that are going into the tree. And if we start cutting into it, we're probably gonna discover that these holes are gonna run all the way down into the heartwood of the tree and we don't know how far that goes but this issue is running all the way through the entire plant check this out as well you can see that there's a prune job over here and again because the plant doesn't have much health or vigor it's not healing over as a natural prune would be and again this is not an ideal situation um, with the way it was pruned if we come again closer to the heart of the tree closer to the heart of the tree you'll notice again all of this damage here again a poor pruning job and over here, this is what I would consider a first degree sunburn, just as your skin would start turning red when you're in the sun for too long. This is here is the bark starting to turn red. This is your first sign of sunburn damage. But as it progresses, it'll damage the cambium tissues and eventually get all the way down to the heart of the wood, which is a supporting structure for the tree. I've consulted with the owner, and the owner said that he would like to remove this tree and as sad as this is gonna look, I'm gonna turn this into a happy story by the end of this, and we're gonna um, try to bring some parts of this plant and recreate a nice living fig tree 
out of, again, taking some cuttings out of this plant. And I'm gonna do that in a completely novel and interesting way, and I'm hoping you enjoy this. But now I'm gonna to get to pruning this plant, and I'll share the results with you in just a moment. So check these out. So before we start, there's a couple more lessons I wanna share with you before we take this plant out. Um, if you come in a little closer over here, you'll notice over here is another pruned branch. And again, being that the cambium tissues within this area are not healthy, it wasn't able to heal over. I'm hoping you can capture this. And again, you can notice that the fig tree, the center of it, also known as the pith, is very soft and uh, an excellent entryway for um, insects as well. And if we can come around this side as well, you can see where there's more life, it was able to heal over, as you can see over here, but still another entryway for pathogens and disease, as well as pests to enter. All of these could have helped the plant in healing and recovering and thriving despite the last heat wave that decimated this tree and opened the canopy and burned um, all of the leaves. And again, here it is trying to recoup. It produced zero fruit this year for the first time in history. And it's on the decline. Again, all of this due to sunburn, as well as the pests that are invading these open um, wounded areas. So at this point, we're gonna remove the tree and I'll share the final results with you in just a moment. So here we are, less than 10 minutes later, a handsaw and a lot of pieces of fig. When you take it down to the stump, I brought over here my power drill. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill holes into the base of the tree and then you have the option to either use a product such as these, which is, um, here's a Grant's stump remover and a second one is here called Stump Out by Bonide. But my preferred way to do this, even once inserting the holes into the tree trunk, is to get some coal. Like if you barbecue with um, any coal, is to bring the residual coal from your barbecue and put it on top. And what it'll do is it'll pull all the moisture out of the tree trunk. It'll grow several feet down and it'll actually bring the plant's root system to, you know, to a conclusion a lot faster than even some of these chemical alternative products. Said I'm gonna finish this off with a happy story. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this plant and rejuvenate it. And I'm gonna do it in a completely novel and unique, and, and unique way that has given me much success over the last couple of decades. And that is, we're gonna try to find a nice piece of wood that has not yet been damaged by sunburn. And I found a piece over here among the, the midst of these branches. I found this piece over here and if you take a look, You'll notice that the tree trunk, again, is not damaged by sunburn. There is evidence of sunburn on the larger trunk. But again, you're going to only want to do this method on wood that's about two to three years old or even younger. And what we're going to do is we're just going to clean it up like so. I'm going to remove the rest of the wood below that's not going to be part of my future tree. And I'm just going to prune it at the node. I can see that there's a node here. You can see there's a leaf scar right there, probably supporting a fig right there with the where that hole is, and we're gonna make that, we're just gonna prune it about a quarter of an inch above, and then we've got another node that's over here, and what we're gonna do, you can tell that this was once the top of the tree, we're gonna plant this upside down. We're gonna take these branches that were once the upper part of the tree, and we're gonna turn them into root systems. We're gonna use this to maximize the amount of surface area and water and nutrients that it can pull from the soil to then support all of these nodes within the tree. There's a node over here and a node over here and a node over here and a node over here. And these will become the future branches and create the next, um, our next future tree. With all of these green tips that are happening, we're just gonna simply remove it like so. I can even, I can even scar the tips a little bit also as we do with um, smaller cuttings to again increase water absorption I'm just going to scar that again like so it's going to come a little closer so you can see the last one how i do it so i'm just going with my prunus here and just scarring it like so you can see all that green life that's right in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our rooting powder if you want to follow me this is where we're going to install it so this will go in here into this hole in this area what we're going to do first is we're going to take our rooting powder like so and I'm just gonna take a little bit with my fingers. I've got some gloves on, and we're just gonna rub it onto the 
root zone area. So each of these three stems will all get a little bit of the rooting hormone powder. This will stimulate the root growth, but most importantly, what a root hormone will do is it'll also prevent rotting from happening. And this is an important consideration. Some growers will use other products such as honey and cinnamon. Um, and cinnamon's also naturally an antifungal. So by doing so, this here is gonna also help um, make sure that the underground parts don't rot while at the same time stimulating root growth. So now we're just gonna prepare the hole, hole behind me. So now when preparing the hole, we just excavated enough dirt to get those branches into the soil that'll then serve as the root system. We prepare the hole big and large enough. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some, I'm using here grow mulch made by Kellogg's. Kellogg's comes out of a city just outside of Long Beach area. And what we're gonna do is just add about 50% compost to 50% native soil. And we're just gonna mix these two parts together like so. What we're then gonna do is we're just gonna take our cutting, and like I said, we're gonna plant it upside down. What was once the base is now gonna be the top, and we're now going to backfill it like so. We're gonna make sure that we don't insert any rocks, and we'll continue backfilling. And here we are. We're now just gonna create a berm so that when we go to watering it, it will be, it can retain the water in this watering zone. We're just going in with our fingers, applying some pressure to remove any possible air pockets. We can then go and take another handful of, the, of this mulch, of this compost, and we can just add that around the plant as well, like so. And now we're just gonna water. You'll notice we didn't fertilize the tree. You wouldn't want to fertilize a brand new cutting, but it is important to mulch the plant. So we got some wood chips over here that we're gonna insert right around like so. And you're gonna to wanna to put about two to four inches of wood chips around the plant. What the wood chips will do will help the plant retain moisture. At the same time, it's gonna also invigorate and enrich the soil biology. It'll attract the earthworms, the beneficial nematodes, beneficial bacteria, um, and so forth. The whole living cycle that exists below the soil, which will help support the living plant, which we want to do and thrive well below the ground as well as above. So, you're also going to want to make sure that the wood chips are away from the tree trunk so it doesn't contribute to another phenomenon known as stem rot. So we're going to pull these wood chips a little bit away and we've got our water just dripping nice and slow and irrigating that entire root zone system around the plant. Being that we're still in summer, we'll continue watering this on average two to three times a week. Generally when it comes to watering your trees in the summer it could be once or twice a week come spring and fall typically it's about once a week and maybe even every other week um, and again when you water make sure you water deep every time you um, add water to your plant so you don't have to revisit it as frequently in the winter it depends on your growing zone if, if it's raining a few times a month you don't need to water at all if it's dry month maybe water that one time I'm going to continue allowing that to water while I'm going to share a couple other things we saw a fig tree suffer third degree sunburns. We need to make sure that that doesn't repeat itself again here today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard products. Let me share that with you here. If you take a look, you're gonna have a few choices. This here is the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 ready to use spray protection against damaging sunburn insects and rodents. And over here, you can actually get it also as the can. Here it's also protection against damaging sunburn insects, registered material for use in organic agriculture. And then our newest line is this, the Ivory Organics Whitewash Formula, protection against damaging summer sunburn and winter sun scald. And it says, again, for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. The biggest difference between the whitewash formulation and the three-in-one 
is that the whitewash formulation is oil free. When you go to opening a can of your three in one, it's going to come with this organic base powder right here, and it also comes with this oil vial. The oil vial has seven natural oils. If you come in a little closer here, you can see the active ingredients include organic castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, and spearmint oil. All of those oils will help the plant while you're also coating it from summer sunburn and winter sun scald. The oils will offer a natural protection against insects and rodents that may also girdle your plant. What the whitewash formulation has is the same base powder, like so, but it has the added protection of the garlic and cinnamon, but again, in an oil-free formulation. Today we're gonna use the whitewash to basically brush on. In addition to, as we saw on the parent fig, which we just removed, if you take a look, if you come in a little closer, you'll notice the very top of the plant, if I just take this little pine needle, you'll notice that the very center, also known as the pith, is very soft. When I touch it, it collapses immediately. And so to prevent insects from boring into this and colonizing the center part of the plant, we're gonna coat it with the Ivory Organics whitewash. Again, the three-in-one could do the um, trick as well. And then we're just going to coat the entire plant to prevent sunburn once the summer sun reaches this part of the garden in the next couple of hours. So let's get on to that step now. Here we are with the whitewash formula. We've just added the water to it. And now we're just gonna coat, again, the pruned surface and we're gonna coat the entire trunk as well. And again, we're doing this in an all organic way. Um, traditionally, most people will whitewash their plants using paint from their paint store. Um, this here gives growers an organic alternative, and there's a lot of university studies that also substantiate the importance of whitewashing your newest installed um, plants and trees, in addition to also maintaining your oldest trees, just as we saw over here, once the canopy opens up, even if it involves summer pruning or if it's a natural phenomenon like we just saw happen here, whitewashing your plant could save and maximize the longevity of your um, prized plants and trees in your garden. Enjoy this educational video by Every Organics. Be sure to like it. Most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of the other educational gardening videos. And again, be sure to subscribe and so I can share the follow up once this begins to grow, which is expected within the next three to about eight weeks. So we still have a few more months of the growing season here in Southern California. So hopefully, we're going to get to enjoy watching this grow in the next few weeks. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.